oh gee, what am I going to do today? I guess I have two options. I can either watch The Mummy from 2017 starring Tom Cruise, or I could go outside and live life and explore the city and meet people. I guess we're watching The Mummy. Yes! Make it, get in here, we're gonna watch The Mummy, woo! So let's prepare some mummy popcorn. This is how you make mummy popcorn. First, you get a fresh popcorn bag and you do the wool. I'm gonna go on over here to our, uh, our laundry room. All right, so the camera is busted. Next, you're gonna take your popcorn bag, take your Tide Pods, and just put the Tide Pods in the popcorn bag. And there we go, boys and girls. We got the Mummy popcorn. This is truly the only way to watch the Mummy. Zach? Wait, Paul, who's closest? What happens if you bite into a Tide Pod? They're just ignoring me. I'm trying to ask you a question. Should I bite into the Tide Pods for this joke? <laughs> no, no, you shouldn't. No? Don't do it. It's not worth it. Okay. <laughs> You have to get your stomach pumped at the hospital. Yeah. Well, I'm not going to swallow it. I'm just going to bite know, into it. It literally like eats at your insides. <laughs> Holy shit. What do you want me to say about this movie? It sucks. It's terrible. The Mummy is made for a dummy. But um, <laughs> The Mummy is a film starring Tom Scientology Cruise, a blonde bimbo who pretends to be a strong female character, Russell Crowe XL, and... Oh my god, guys, it's Joey Salads. What's up, guys? I'm Joey Salads, and today I'm going to be doing a social experiment. Joey Salads is in this movie. I I'm, I'm glad this guy's acting career is taking off. This guy has come a long way from pissing in his own mouth to entertain people on the internet. So, this movie is about... Hold on, I gotta, I gotta look up what this movie's about. Oh, here's the plot synopsis. An ancient Egyptian princess is awakened from her crypt beneath the desert, bringing with her malevolence grown over millennia and terrors that defy human comprehension. But she soon after finds salvation in Scientology. This isn't right. So what makes this film so special as opposed to any other garbage studio cash grab? Well, this film is actually part of a new series that is going to be a garbage studio cash grab. This film is the first film in Universal's Dark Universe. What is this? Well, that's gonna take a bit of explaining. So 100 years ago, Universal made some movie with a mummy in it, right? And they own the rights to the mummy. So they kept making movies with The Mummy. They made sequels, they made prequels, they made remakes, they put them with Abbott and Costello, they put them with Brendan Fraser. Recently, Universal executives saw the success of the Marvel Cinematic Universe, and some moron went, What do we have that's like superheroes? And some other dipshit goes, Well, we've got some monsters. And then some interns scuffled through a bunch of pictures of Universal monsters, like Frankenstein and Dracula or whatever, and then he gets The Mummy and he goes, What about The Mummy? And then a female executive goes, Let's make The Mummy a woman! Cause feminism is popular now. And then the other idiot goes, Good idea. Then he unzips his pants and pulls out his, the intern takes out his and starts jacking himself off. And the other executive starts yelling and rubbing them to stick their dick their dicks to the female executive's eye sockets and swerving around. As the intern violently ejaculates over the table, he then throws it at the two executives. They both, the intern bleeds out of the table. The two executives ejaculate the intern's eye sockets. Megan, what, what is this? This is disgusting. That's that's what happened at the meeting. So making the dark universe was kind of a risk. So they had to dumb it down as much as possible. Not only for American audiences, but also for another large film market. China. China. So if the dark universe doesn't succeed in America, at least it will succeed in China. But it didn't really. So now the whole thing is screwed. The dark universe is currently falling apart, and it's only the first movie. So in all likelihood, the Mummy will be the first and last entry in this god-awful marketing gimmick. Although I've been saying that about the DC Cinematic Universe for years, and that hasn't happened yet. They're getting close, though. The whole campaign to get the general audiences pumped for the Dark Universe has been a complete failure. Most people don't even understand the concept, and the few people who do think it's stupid. And whoever was in charge of promoting this whole thing is dumber than a sack of bricks. The first thing we saw of the Dark Universe is literally this broken trailer for The Mummy. This trailer is missing audio tracks in it. It's hilarious. No. Universal tried to take it down after releasing it, but of course, removing something from the internet is almost impossible. It might be easier to find a sugar cube on the fucking moon than it is to get rid of an internet meme.
So now they get the least talented people in the film industry. I'm of the opinion that you can make a movie about anything, as long as you make it interesting, and as long as you get the right people. Tom Cruise is not the right people. Listen, I like Tom Cruise in most movies, right? I like him in the Mission Impossible movies. I admire the fact that he's willing to kill himself for the role. Oh my god. He's fucking nuts. Oh my god. Tom, what are you doing? He's fucking like suicidal. Hey, you wanna watch Tom Cruise try to kill himself for an hour and a half? Go see your fucking movie. What? He fucking drove into another truck. He's definitely a movie star, right? In this movie, though, he stinks. <laughs> what it, What was that? He's like, oh, oh, oh. You guys know the George Clooney impersonator from Eric Andre, who gets like all the mannerisms down of George Clooney? And now I can't even think of George Clooney anymore. I think of the George Clooney impersonator. Hip hop, rap, hip hop, hop, hip hop, roo, rapity roo. Uh. So this is like if Tom Cruise was doing a bad impression of himself. So apparently, Cruise had excessive control over the film and had his hand in almost every aspect of production. He helped rewrite the script, he was in the editing room, he was telling the director how to direct on set, he was enlarging his role and, and like getting rid of the mummy segments from the movie so it could be more about him. You said it, Pitch too. Oh my god, Tom Cruise speaking Egyptian. Reminds me of the scene where Brad Pitt speaks Italian. Buongiorno. And he also wanted to do some crazy Mission Impossible shit, and in this movie, that's the plane sequence where they're like, they're they're jumping around in a falling plane. I mean, this looks kind of cool, but this was Tom Cruise's idea. <laughs> the director just wanted to use the set and some wires. Basically, Tom Cruise, it was so paranoid about this movie being bad that he had his hand in almost every aspect and ended up making it worse. I mean, for a film called The Mummy, it's more about Tom Cruise than The Mummy in it. The truth is that in order to get an audience, to love a character like that, you gotta be a movie star. It's really that simple. <laughs> um, because, you know, Tom's character over the course of this movie pretty much makes every wrong choice, and yet he's really likable. Tom Cruise is good if you get him in the right role, but this is not a good role for him. Same thing with Russell Crowe, who is great in some movies and then awful in others. And I'm Javert. Do not forget my name! This is not the right movie though. He sucks in this movie. Playing, He's playing Dr. Jekyll. Hey. Russell and I have known each other over 20 years. We've talked about working together and now we're gonna do this very cool fight. I'm really yeah. excited about it. <laughs> I'm really fucking pumped, mate. <laughs> it's awesome. <laughs> Sophia Batella is whatever. Like, she's just there because she's hot, right? And then I read this interview with the director, who was Alex Kurtzman, which we'll discuss later. And he goes on about, like, if you look at her eyes, and this is what I got from watching Kingsman, there's a whole performance going on there. And in not saying anything, but conveying so much to me, I thought, oh my god, no matter how much prosthetics are put on her, no matter how much CGI we put on her face, if I see this, she's going to convey something very emotional to me. And it's like, dude, you're full of shit. She was in Kingsman because she was agile. It wasn't her acting, okay? Like, you hired her because she's hot, all right? There's nothing wrong with that, but what's all this bullshit like, oh, if you look into her eyes? Then there's this other bimbo. And I gotta be honest, I don't know what the hell she's doing in this movie. I don't know why she's here. I don't know what she does. And then later on, it's revealed that she was only there to bring Tom Cruise to Dr. Jekyll? But, like, why was she there in the first place? Sergeant Morton here thinks that I'll be too embarrassed to tell you that I had him in my hotel room three nights ago in Baghdad. Oh, so the character had sex with Tom Cruise and that's why she's here? I mean, well, that's how the actress got this role, too, so... The writing in this is, like, total cringe. I'm not embarrassed, Nick. Disgusted, yes. Regretful, oh, certainly. But mainly just amazed at your ability to mimic all the qualities of genuine human intimacy, if only for 15 seconds. And then she keeps rambling about all these tombs and all this boring information that this writer got off Wikipedia. Wait, hold on a second. Let me see how many writers are in this movie. Oh yeah, six writing credits. <laughs> Alex Kurtzman is of course one of them. I think what you will see is the story of, um, uh, you know, a 5,000 year old um, Egyptian princess who um, made a bargain with essentially with the devil and it was thwarted and she's now come to modern day to complete that bargain and he wrote Star Trek 2 he wrote Transformers 2 he wrote the amazing spider-man 2 all these terrible movies and this is his first time directing a feature film and it's total ass 
Wow, 10 shots of the same explosion. Really cool. You know, those shots are just there as safety. You're not supposed to use all of them. The bad writing and directing combine to create long, drawn-out sequences of exposition. We've been searching for something called the Dagger of Set. A ceremonial knife with a large jewel at the hilt. Set is the Egyptian god of death. <laughs> Now we got Brian Tyler, the composer, another Ralph the Movie Maker alum. This guy is the worst hack composer in Hollywood. You ever heard a forgettable track in a movie? Yeah, he probably wrote it. I don't think there's one good score in here in his entire resume. Apparently he recorded 107 minutes of, of like composition for the soundtrack, which is longer than the movie. He's just a mess. Then you got the sound designers who sucked. I mean, the ADR is terrible during this helicopter ride. And of course, the most obvious cliche in a bad sound designer's catalog is the violin. When is Hollywood going to stop using this violin? The VFX are, are like, pretty good sometimes, but most of them aren't. Like, this film's over-reliance on CGI is what really kills it. What's the point of having an epic globe-trotting adventure when everything looks like it was made in a computer? <laughs> the cinematography's okay, but there's no style to it. There's no consistency. No one gave a shit about making this movie. This is a paycheck for all these people. Everyone was just thinking, eh, I'll do a good job so I can take the footage and put it on my reel. The behind the scenes of the movie is actually way more interesting than the movie itself. The movie itself is boring and mostly consists of the same exposition over and over and over again. The movie starts and there's exposition. Then we get some exposition from the news. Then Russell Crowe shows up and starts regurgitating exposition. Then this dude tells Tom Cruise some exposition. Then the blonde bimbo, Tom Cruise, and Joey Salads go into the tomb. Then they go on a plane and there's more exposition there. Then Joey Salad stabs the general. Then Tom Cruise keeps yelling, stop, stop. Yo guys, stop. Yo, stop, stop. Hey, Bill, stop. Stop. Bill, Bill. That's really most of Tom Cruise's dialogue in this movie. If you take a shot every time he says stop. Stop it. Stop. Stop it. Stop. 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 Bill, stop. 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 Stop it. Or what? What? What the hell? What are you talking about? What's happening? What? 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 You'd probably die 30 minutes in. What's happening? Then Tom Cruise finally dies and is like, thank God I don't have to listen to any more exposition. Ah, oh, fuck. Now I gotta listen to more. Then Tom Cruise is like, I gotta get the hell out of here. So he goes in the bathroom to hide from the exposition, right? Then he looks in the mirror and Joey Salads is there waiting for him. Today I'm gonna be doing a social experiment. And then he starts giving exposition. You can't escape. Then to escape him, Tom Cruise goes in some alleyway, which looks like, like it's from Hogwarts or something. It's like the scariest looking alleyway. W where is this? That a bunch of mummies capture Tom Cruise and bring him into some Scientology fever dream. Just like visions Velron Hubbard are talking to women. So you're starting to get the formula now, right? It goes exposition, action, exposition, action, exposition, action. And that's the whole movie is that. And interwoven are some Scientology fever dreams and Tom Cruise yelling what or stop. So Russell Crowe comes in and he's all like, I'm Nick Fury, I'm bringing the Avengers together. Who am I? <laughs> The more relevant question, Mr. Morton, is who exactly are you? And then there's like a half hour of action that's boring, and then the movie's over. And the credits are 10 minutes long, not even kidding. 10 minutes long. How can so many people go into making something that is so, not even bad, but just boring? There isn't much to say, honestly. This movie only exists because Universal went, we want to make lots of money like Marvel without understanding why people like Marvel movies. People like Marvel movies because they like those characters. They're funny, they're creative. I'll say it, they're unique. Before everyone started ripping them off, no one else 
ever wanted to make a cinematic universe. No one else wanted to try because it would be way too complicated. No one else thought it would succeed. And Marvel did it, goddammit, and they did it well. And now all these other studios are coming out of the woodwork, dredging up whatever, whatever fucking properties they have. Oh, we got Garbage Pail Kids? Let's make it into a cinematic universe. And this movie only exists to be a commercial and a vehicle to propel this whole series forward. But you can't do that. You need to make a good movie first that makes people excited, right? And it's not like people would see this movie if it was good, because honestly, I think this movie would have bombed no matter what, because no one gives a shit about The Mummy, no one gives a shit about Tom Cruise and his crazy Scientology fever dreams, but they didn't even do that. They just made a two hour movie where people explain the plot to each other. Who would pay to see this in a theater? Who wants to pay money and go out to a theater and sit down and spend like a whole day just to see Tom Cruise on a big screen explaining bullshit. So here's the aftermath. Despite grossing $409 million worldwide, it's a box office bomb. They invested a lot more money into it than that. And plus for movies like this, they're not looking for them to make $409 million. They want these movies to make a billion dollars. I mean, this is the start of a series, right? You gotta get people excited. You need lots of money for this kind of stuff. And the projected losses were like $95 million. The movie sucked, and everyone started jumping ship. Alex Kurtzman left, and then some guy Chris Morgan left, who was like another big producer behind the project. He produced the Fast and Furious movies, along with some other stuff. But they saw that no one wanted to see a cinematic universe with universal monsters that took on the same template as Marvel because it's the dumbest shit ever. There's been no news on The Invisible Man starring Johnny Depp. There's no news about the Van Helsing reboot. And this Bride of Frankenstein movie, which they apparently were gonna start shooting soon, has been moved back. And the director, Bill Condon? No, Bill Condon, is continuing to work on the script. And the studio also removed it from their release schedule. So, I don't think it's happening. Something they are considering though is giving the rights of all these characters to some smaller horror directors or the Blumhouse production studio. And honestly, that would probably suck too because they would just turn them into two hour long jump scare nightmares. And God knows I don't want to watch that headache inducing garbage, but it has to be better than this. Pan, pan, this is November 4, zero, niner, niner. What the hell? So if this shit show of a dark universe is going to keep going, I'll keep talking about them. But I don't think it is. I think this is where it dies, right here. Think of all the amazing Ralph the Movie Maker videos that could have been if dummies had gone to see this, but they didn't. And I'm proud of you guys. You spoke with your wallets. You guys said, you are giving us the bare minimum of entertainment and we're not going to see this crap. And now it's done. You know, Hollywood's turning. It's gonna get better if we keep doing this. Or Disney will just buy every valuable property and take over Hollywood. And the only place you're gonna be able to see like really interesting indie movies is on VOD. And the only reason you'd go to a theater is to see a superhero movie or a Star Wars movie. So Hollywood is dying. That's great news. They also made, oh my God, they made a video game based on The Mummy and it came out a few months after the movie was released. It's called The Mummy Demastered. So you guys are getting a video game review in here too. I can't wait to see this piece of shit. Wow, that, that actually looks pretty cool. Damn, I kind of want to play this now. And that music, that's a badass music. What? They were offered the public quite a long time ago on the subject of gradation. I want to talk to you about the root, the bridge. When you first say to somebody, we're going to make you better, or we want to make you better, he immediately asks the question, 
Better what? Bank robber, of course, say he wanted to become a better bank robber. 